Good morning. Welcome to services here at Holy Trinity. For those that might not know, I'm Janet Rivero. I'm an elder here at the church. Can you believe that it's December, the end of December already, the 27th? This is the last Sunday of 2020. Uh, most of us are saying hurrah, and we're hoping that 2021 will be a lot better than 2020 was. Please join me in the call to worship. We come to celebrate the good news of a, good, of a great joy. Glory to God in the highest. Unto us is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. A multitude of the heavenly host appeared, praising God. Glory to God in the highest. Let us worship God. Please join me for the prayer of confession. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we are ashamed and sorry for all we have done to displease you. Forgive our sins and help us to live in your light and walk in your ways for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. God's forgiveness is as everlasting as the ages. God's mercy is as wide as the seas. Surely the Lord will forgive our inequities. Through God, a right spirit will be restored within us. For the past month, we've been listening and singing Christmas carols. Some of the old favorites are over 250 years old. Yet we look forward to hearing and singing them each year. Many fine new carols have been written, but the best loved ones are those that come down to us through the centuries. Carols have been written for all seasons of the year, but those sung at Christmas time have become so well known that generally when we speak of carols, we mean Christmas carols. Many of our oldest carols have no known history. Even before the Christian era, songs of this type were sung. They are the expressions of happiness of some forgotten person. St. Francis of Assisi is said to be one of the first to make singing of Christmas carols popular, having the story of the first Christmas enacted and accompanied by a sermon and singing. For many years, a part of the holiday season was singing of Christmas carols by groups of people going about from house to house. The stern Puritans forbade the singing of those happy songs. But anything so loved by the people could not die. The carols were remembered and taught to the children. In the 19th century, carols became popular again, and the custom of community singing of Christmas carols has grown in popularity. I'm going to give a brief history of a number of these carols, and some of them Paul is going to play, and Jocelyn's going to sing the first verse. The words of the ones we're going to sing are printed in your bulletins although we probably know them by heart. Angels from the Realms of Glory, written by James Montgomery, was first printed December 24, 1816, in a paper he edited. Included in one of the first hymn books used in the, by the Church of England, it had a wide circulation in both England and America. Formerly, it was sung to the melody of an old French carol. Now it appears with music by Henry Smart. Away in a manger, 
is a simple hymn beloved by children everywhere and is often called Luther's Cradle Hymn. Some say Luther did not write it, but that some artists imagine he would choose this type of song to sing his own child to sleep. Regardless of origin, it is one of our favorite Christmas carols. It Came Upon a Midnight Clear was written by a Unitarian minister from Wayland, Massachusetts, a scenic town outside of Boston. Edward H. Sears as a poem for peace in 1849. The Mexican War had just ended and the Civil War was on the horizon when it was pinned on Christmas Eve. A year later, Sears' friend, Richard S. Willis, wrote the joyful music for it, giving us one of the few hymns of the 19th century with the real Christmas message. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. It came upon a midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold peace on the earth good will to men from heaven's all gracious king the world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Deck the Halls began in Wales where it was written, and it was the custom to leave all the outer doors unbolted on Christmas Eve, lest the Holy Family should wish to enter. Now this carol is sung in every land, particularly when greens are being hung and the house is being decorated for the holidays. O Come All Ye Faithful was originally sung in Latin. This famous hymn has become popular in the English translation by Frederick Oakley, made in 1841. The author of the music is unknown. It may be Italian or Portuguese origin, origin but is generally credited to John Redding, an English organist at Winchester in the latter half of the 17th century. Few hymns are so stirring and beautiful and so universally known. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, as Pastor Clint told us last week, was written by Henry W. Longfellow. Although much of Longfellow's poetry was religious, little of it has been set to music. His brother Samuel was a noted writer of hymns, and the works of the two is sometimes confused. Written in 1864, the words were later set to very appropriate music. The bass sounds like the ring of a bell. The first four bars come from the old Amen and is another hymn with the message, Peace on Earth, Goodwill Towards Men. 
O Little Town of Bethlehem, is one of the few carols by American writers. This lively hymn was composed by the Reverend Philip Brooks in 1868, while he was rector of the Church of Holy Trinity in Philadelphia. His Sunday school classes asked him for a Christmas song. Reverend Brooks had traveled to the Holy Land the year before and was struck by how peaceful Bethlehem was. He had lost many of his parishioners in the Civil War, and the country was still grieving the loss of President Abraham Lincoln. After writing the hymn, he took it to his church organist for music. The organist, Louis H. Redner, says he heard this melody in a dream on Christmas Eve and finished the arrangement in time for the service the next day. The words of What Child Is This are sung to the old English tune, Green Sleeves. The lively tune has been popular since the time of Elizabeth I. Christmas Comes But Once a Year is also sung to this air. Shakespeare mentions it twice in The Merry Wives of Windsor. Sir John Strainer arranged the standard version. We Three Kings is of carol particularly associated with Twelfth Night, celebrated in most countries as the day the three wise men from the East were led to the manger in Bethlehem. There's an old Spanish legend that these kings go to the Holy Land every year and on their vi way visit children, leaving toys for the good ones. The words and music for this carol were written by John H. Hopkins. Hark the Herald Angels Sing is one of the most famous of Protestant hymn writers. Charles Wesley was inspired to write this beautiful carol as he walked to church Christmas morning in 1730 and heard the pealing of the bells. An organist at Waltham Abbey later set it to music when Mendelssohn had composed for a festival at Leipzig in 1840. It was finally published in 1856, although the composer once declared that the music would never fit sacred words, but should express something gay. The inspiring carol, Joy to the World, was written by Isaac Watts 
the founder of English hymn writing, and is usually sung to the tune Antioch from the Messiah by Handel. The parish priest of a church of Oberndorf, Austria, wrote the words for the beautiful Christmas song, Silent Night, on the day before Christmas Eve in 1818. Mice had eaten at the bellow of the church organ. The priest and organist were sadly troubled by the lack of music for midnight mass. As the young priest, Joseph Moore, strolled in the hills above the peaceful village, he thought it surely was on such a clear and quiet night like this that hosts of angels sang out the glorious news that the Savior had been born. He imagined the shepherds, Mary, Joseph, and the child, as well as strangers who were attracted by the light of the great star. These images seemed to shape themselves into a poem. The next day, he showed the poem to the church organist, Franz Gruber, who knew the words should be sung at Christmas. But what could be used for accompaniment? Sadly, he held up his guitar, to which the young cleric said, like Mary and Joseph in the stable, we must be content with what God provides for us. Franz Gruber strummed the melody that came to him, putting the words to the melody. On Christmas Eve, 1818, the church choir, accompanied only by a guitar, sang for the very first time the immortal hymn that begins, Silent Night, Holy Night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly Let us pray. May your days be brightened with the music of Christmas and your heart be warmed with the Christ child's love. Amen. It seems like our list of people that need our prayers doesn't get any smaller, but it seems to get bigger. So we're still praying for the Wilcott family, David, Chuck, Joan, Jim, Freddie, Wendell, Paula, Ron, Terry, Cecilia, Byron, Betsy, Una, Beth, Billy Soderman, Ed, and Ellie, along with Amos, Ames Michael Nottingham, Regan, Dave, Doris, Sharon, my friend Bev, Scott, Linda, David and Arlene, Donna and Ted, and Maureen. Please pray with me. Holy One, as you come to dwell among us, show us how to live as your faithful people, sharing the good news of your grace with all through Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, now as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. Now, please enjoy the music, Go Tell It on the Mountain, by the Paul and Clint.
Waco Tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born While shepherds kept their watching For silent flocks by night Behold throughout the heavens there's shown a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior. Earth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That blessed Christmas morn Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born The preacher of South Church stood before his congregation one Sunday and said, I have bad news, good news, and bad news. The bad news is the church needs a new roof. The congregation groaned. The good news is we have enough money to fix the roof. Oh, the congregation was all smiles. The bad news is it's in your pockets. Luckily, Holy Trinity is in good shape at the end of 2020, considering all that's been going on. You have been very faithful to your church, and we, it is greatly appreciated. The New Year's coming. We hope you've got your new envelopes and continue like you have been, whether it's been turning it in on Sunday morning, mailing it in, doing it by realm, whatever is best for you. We just appreciate it and hope you continue in 2021. Now as the holiday season's coming to an end, a new year's upon us, let us bow our heads for the benediction. Let us hear Christ's message of hope. Let us sing Christ's message of joy. Let us spread Christ's message of peace. Let us live Christ's message of justice. Now may the miracle of Christmas fill our hearts with peace, happiness, and joy today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>